Hi there, it's Paul Tarbeth here, nutrition and lifestyle coach of Rawson awesome Healthy. Now, most people have salt in their diet. They either add it to the foods that they're eating, as in the form of table salt, or they get it through eating processed foods like pre-packaged meals, for example. So in today's video, I wanted to try and answer the question, how much salt can you get away with having in your diet? Well, let's find out. Now salt is used in foods for a number of reasons including flavour enhancement and as a food preservative and as human beings we've been consuming salt now for what well, in our diet for many thousands of years right across the world across many different cultures but science is coming to recognise more and more that uh, consuming salt can have serious implications for our health. Now the latest dietary guidelines for Americans recommends that people consume less than 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day. While the American Heart Association, on the other hand, recommends that people stay below 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day. So to give you an example, so you can just like picture it in your head, half a teaspoon of salt equals 1,150 milligrams of sodium, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt equals 1,725 milligrams of sodium, and one teaspoon of salt equals 2,300 milligrams of sodium. And the American Heart Association say, quote, For optimal health, the American Heart Association recommends people aim to eat no more than 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day. That level is associated with a significant reduction in blood pressure, which in turn reduces the risk of heart disease and stroke. Now, many people believe that if they don't consume table salt, and instead consume things like sea salt, for example, that these are much healthier alternatives. But according to the American Heart Association, this is not actually the case, especially when it comes to high blood pressure. And same answer to a question under their Myths About High Blood Pressure section of their website. Myth, I use kosher or sea salt when I cook instead of regular table salt. They are low sodium alternatives. Chemically kosher salt and sea salt are the same as table salt, 40% sodium, and count the same towards total sodium consumption. So don't think that just because you're consuming natural salt, as they call it, that it's any healthier than regular table salt, uh, at least when it comes to high blood pressure. Now guess how much sodium Americans eat on average? Well, on average, Americans eat more than 3,400 milligrams of sodium each day, which is significantly more than both of the recommended daily intakes that we have just talked about, and so which raises the average American's risk of suffering from serious health issues, including high blood pressure, strokes, and heart disease. Now, it's important to note here that our bodies are very clever when it comes to controlling levels of sodium in our body. So, for example, if you're eating a much lower intake of salt, or you're not eating any salt at all, and you're just getting the sodium from the whole foods that you eat, then your body can actually um, manage um, the stores of sodium that you've already got and recycle them. And it uses a hormone produced by the adrenal glands called aldosterone to do this, which is really clever. Now the consumption of too much salt not only increases your risk of blood pressure or hypertension, it can also increase your risk of stroke and heart disease, but also other health issues that include stomach cancer, osteoporosis, autoimmune problems, water retention, acid reflux and migraines. Now there have been studies done which have looked at the impact of salt consumption on our arterial health, which of course are vital to the proper functioning of our hearts and our entire circulatory system. And one such study looked at reducing salt intake by just half a teaspoon per day to 6 grams from the usual 9 grams, and a significant improvement in artery function was discovered after just two days of eating this lower level of salt. Now it's well known that salt consumption can increase people's blood pressure and this is a significant factor in heart disease, but it appears that some people are more resistant to salt consumption when it comes to higher blood pressure. So another study looked at these people to see if their salt intake negatively affected their artery function even when their blood pressure did not increase. And they found that yes, their artery function was significantly impaired by their salt intake independent of their blood pressure and that the harm to their arteries happened within just minutes of them consuming salt. So with all this in mind, how much salt or sodium should we be eating in our diets to stay healthy? 
Now it's worth noting that for most of our evolution as human beings, we most likely would have been eating around 575 or so milligrams of sodium in our diet from the plant foods that we would have eaten, and of course we wouldn't have had salt shakers back then either. Now on a whole foods plant diet, and one which is all raw or mostly raw for example, it is very easy to get this level of sodium in your diet. Now I've been consuming a salt-free or virtually salt-free uh, diet now for over seven years and the only time I might have some salt in my diet is in the odd occasion when I go out to a restaurant or something somewhere and they might add some salt in there. Um, but even then it's not much and uh, if it's too much I, I certainly won't eat it because it's just I find it's just too strong a flavour for me now. And this is very interesting because in the past I would have um, eaten foods which had lots of salt in them, they would have tasted very salty and I would have liked that really salty taste. But now I find that the way the foods that I eat are, uh, are not salty anymore or very little salt in them and I have just much more appreciation for the foods that I eat. There's much more of a, a nuance in the flavours and the taste that I experience. I really have to say, uh, hand on heart, that I really do enjoy the foods that I eat much more now because of those subtle flavours that I, I just couldn't experience in the past when I used to just load the salt on my food. Yes, there are people out there who do like to add a little pinch of salt to their food and there is no scientific evidence to suggest that adding a little bit of salt to your diet is going to cause you any health issues. Now in saying that, I think it's important to also say that you can also get all the sodium that your body needs from a whole foods plant diet. And you can get lots of sodium from plant foods like celery from example, from leafy greens, from tomatoes and dry tomatoes etc. Which is a great way to get the salty taste in your food and I believe is the ultimate approach. And in that way, you're going to be well within the recommended sodium intake recommended by the American Dietary Guidelines and the American Heart Association, and almost certainly eating the same level of sodium that our ancestors would have eaten for the vast majority of human evolution. And if you want to find out more about sodium-rich plant sources on the whole foods plant diet, then please follow the link on the screen to an article that we've got on our website. And for salt-free, nutrient-dense raw food meals, Please get a copy of our 5 day raw food menu plan which is full of delicious recipes and you can get by clicking on the link on the screen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye for now.